Longinopolis. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's great to have you here. I have to tell you, you are uh, uh, quite a draw these days, I must tell I you. I seem to be very popular. I'm, I'm, I'm very flattered. Uh, well, you know what's amazing to me? I'm, the irony here is compelling. Berkeley is almost uh, the birthplace of free speech. Home of the free speech movement. That's Absolutely. right, from the 60s. I Absolutely. remember it. You don't, I'm sure. I'm sorry to say I don't. Uh, yeah, but, and, but, but it don't is amazing. You don't look Okay, so tell, me, tell us, tell my audience what you experienced the other mm -hmm. night after being invited to give a speech. Now, let's make one thing clear. Uh, you are conservative. You're an openly gay conservative, yeah. uh, you know, politically incorrect pundit. So they say. Um, I tell jokes that upset the left, you know, um, about some of their special favored victim groups. Um, but I'm very popular on campus because I talk about free speech and free expression and something that is really under threat on American college campuses, which is the First Amendment. Um, it's, you know, many of these universities are not fulfilling their commitment to the First Amendment. So student groups invite me to point that out, to talk about the absurdity of, you know, the sort of, I mean, there's no other word for it than persecution, really, that conservatives and libertarians find themselves, you know, um, subject to two on college campuses. All right, so you get to Berkeley. I mean, you're, you. you're from where? Uh, I'm from London. Okay, you're from London. You get to Berkeley. I mean, the reputation is kind of this free spirit. Everybody's I high smoking weed. What's we're supposed to be like, you know? I mean, I couldn't believe it. I honestly couldn't believe it. I'm from Europe. We, if it exists, there is re there are regulations about it. If it exists, there are rules about it in, yeah. in, in, in Europe. I come to America, you know, home of the home of the free, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I've never experienced okay. anything quite so like that. Okay. So you're in the building. What is yeah. the first thing that you're told when you realize that there's a problem? Well, there's there's noise coming from outside. And so people are hurling things at the police, hurling things at the building, you know, um, uh, Roman candles, rocks, all kinds of other things, fireworks. They're setting light to things. The tree is on fire. I'm evacuated to the fifth floor, and then they realize they've got to get me out of the building. There's a point at which I'm thinking they might storm the building and the police don't seem to be doing anything. I have a, a small detail of like four Navy SEALs around me. They're not going to be able to hold off 150 of these organized paid leftist agitators. Well, why do you say the police don't seem to be doing anything? Well, um, in, I, you know, I probably visited more college campuses than anybody else uh, in America over the last uh, year and a How half. How many do you think? Uh, probably 50 to give speeches and to do various other things in, in the last year alone. Um, and what I've noticed is there seem to be emerging relationships. I wouldn't call it, go as far as to call it collusion, but there, there are understandings between college administrators, local mayors, and the police force that they're going to stand back and do nothing. Okay, so when they object to your coming, yes. they object to your coming. They don't want you to speak. Why don't they want you to speak? Because I tell the truth. No, um, no, that's not enough. Why don't they want you to speak? <laughs> uh, well, I think that the main reason is that they're just, they're, they're experiencing uh, a revolt from their own students. Uh, the, the university administrators are so completely politically uh, homogenous. So they're because you're more right and they're left, is that what it is? Yeah, but I mean, that shouldn't matter, really. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what your opinions it? are. I, it does to them, of course, okay. because they're very threatened by Trump. You know, they're very threatened by this new... So you like Trump? I love him. All right, love you him. love He's Trump, wonderful. they hate Trump, so they're going crazy. Of How many people were arrested? Uh, one, I think, and this is 150 people I violently called. rioting. One person was arrested, person. all right? I mean, and you know why that person was arrested? Policing. Because they basically stood there and they failed to disperse. <laughs> but this is, this is what's Rocks. happened all over the place. It's happened at Davis, happened at UW what Seattle. What do we need to do? Donald Trump needs to do what he's been doing so far very well, which is put his money where his mouth is and do what he says he's going to do. He needs to start withdrawing federal funding from colleges that refuse to honor their First Amendment commitments. And he needs to start with UC Davis, UW, UW Seattle, and UC Berkeley. He already indicated he's going to do that. Do you he realize that has. we give them $357 million? 370, tax, tax 370. Taxpayers. All right, Berkeley whatever gives it is. Berkeley 370. And you know, the thing about Berkeley is all of this goes into liberal arts colleges, uh, liberal arts uh, studies, studies that don't produce real jobs. All right, jobs. you got a book coming up, but i got to go. What's the name of your book? Dangerous. Uh, it's number one on Amazon right now. It's going to be one of the books of 2017. Dangerous. Milo Yiannopoulos, good to have you on Thank Justice. You so Thank, Thank you. you.